Okay, so here's a quick demo of how you can use a lock and amplifier to measure the relative phase between two signals. So uh, my scope has a built-in function generator and I'm generating a 10 megahertz reference signal and that 10 megahertz goes to the reference input of this lock and amplifier. This is a EG&G 5202 RF lock-in and uh, in fact it was the first RF lock-in ever on the market. I got this for 50 bucks off of eBay and you can see that the, the Q um, meter seems to be broken, but the output is fine. So I don't know if it's a sticky meter or, or something's going on here, but it's not a big deal because typically you take your data out of the BNC outputs and uh, you can see that things are working with the I channel anyway. So uh, anyway, the I channel goes to uh, the X and the Q channel goes to the Y. And then uh, the input to the lock and the signal we're going to measure the phase difference between this input and this input were coming from my uh, signal generator and so uh, I had to play around but the signal generator is generating 9.99977 megahertz and uh, so when we, we do that we find that we get this uh, little phaser diagram that's spinning around on the screen and a few minutes ago before I started the video that spot was almost not moving so if I bump up to uh, oh, the wrong way. So now we're at like uh, 9.999976 megahertz on the signal generator and we're still at 10 megahertz coming out of the function generator on the scope. And you can see now that the phase relationship between the two signals is almost constant. It's drifting around ever so slightly. So what this is telling us is that the the frequency difference or the phase difference between these two signals is varying very slowly. So, I mean, right now it takes 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 7. So, you know, it's one-seventh of a hertz is the frequency difference between the two signals right now. So, and it's only 23 uh, parts out of 10 million. So it's two parts in a million is the absolute frequency difference between these two signals. And uh, I think that's pretty good considering that I don't know what the frequency standard in this uh, scope is, but I don't think it's, it's very precise. The HP signal generator has an oven, but it's only been on for a minute or two, so I don't think it's going to be that precise. So it's not bad. But anyway, the, the cool thing here is that we can see the uh, actual phase difference between these two signals as a function of time just by looking at the XY plot of the I and Q values. So anyway, this is just a quick demo, um, but I, I thought it was kind of fun. So, and you can see that if I make the frequency difference, you know, a little bit higher, now the phaser diagram spins around. And then we'll go back and we'll try to get it as steady as we can get it. Okay, so things are drifting around. So right now it's, they're off by, you know, maybe half a hertz, one hertz. And so there's an absolute frequency difference of about 24 hertz or whatever it works out to. Maybe it's 240. I'll have to do the math. And then there's the uh, the phase or the frequency drift, which is depending on you know what's going on in the room with temperature and uh, as the uh, frequency standard in the signal generator warms up. So anyway, just a quick demo of phasers and lock and amplifiers, and that's it.